Hi YouTube, in this video I'm going to be making Max Rebo, who is one of the musicians in Return of the Jedi. I'm also going to be making his musical instrument, and this is how I started it off. So I basically just cut two circles of plywood, and then I've used very thin ply just to attach the bottom to the top. This is all stuck together with um, PVA glue, and it's the type of PVA glue that you buy for wood flooring. Don't try to use normal PVA glue because it won't be strong enough. So you can see I've cut a hole in the top, which is where he's going to sit. And then I've got this extra section that's going to come in somewhere about here, which is where all of the keys are going to go. Here are the keys and I've cut them all separately and stuck them onto a semicircle. This actually ends up being wrong and I end up having to cut all of these because they need to be at an angle. At the moment you can see they're all flat but they actually angle inwards okay this is with the front section attached you can see i've done a couple of battens there that are screwed in then i've got another sheet of very thin ply and i've ruled this all off into strips i'll cut all of those out and they're going to continue around this front edge just to make that nice solid wall at the front like this so this gives me my main cylindrical shape for the whole thing you can see I've started now adding these um, sections onto the side. This is just with thicker plywood and I've cut them just to give me my overall contours for the edges. I will obviously need to continue this contouring all the way around the front as well. Next I cut lots of long strips of plywood and I just used secateurs to snip them into small rectangles. Now I just glued each rectangle on individually. Again with the strong PVA glue it becomes really quite rigid. You can see along the top there I've done a thinner row to create a bit of a curve at the top and here I've just used bamboo skewers and again I just snipped them with um, secateurs just to give this kind of rough rounded edge. This will all be sanded down and painted later so a lot of these gaps kind of get filled so I don't worry about those at this point. I can actually add a bit of filler as well later to fill in any gaps. These were the shapes that I cut for the contouring along the front and you can see I've just done an angled edge at the top there. That will allow it to kind of slope in a little bit. These will go all the way around this front edge and then I'll add all the plywood rectangles to that as well. And it should end up looking like this. So exactly the same as how I did the back. Um, you can see here it's all been filled in now at this point as well. I've just used this um, grey filler. It's actually this stuff called gun gum. I bought it originally for repairing an exhaust and it was pretty rubbish for repairing the exhaust but it's really good for filling in holes. It kind of dries a bit like um, grey plastic. For the kind of piano type keys you can see now they all slope in at an angle and what I've done is I've just added a little block of wood underneath each one which slopes down and I've put a bit of that gun gum stuff in as well and then squidged them on to get the right angle for each one so i've used the gun gum in every little tiny um, gap and hole that there has been you can see it all the way along this edge it's really good for filling quite big spaces as well and you can just kind of push it in with like a credit card or something like that and all of this i can now go around and sand as well just to make it a bit smoother but i actually quite like the fact that it's given it a tiny bit of texture when i come to paint it it might make the whole instrument look a little bit more realistic and rustic you can see here where i've started adding plywood along this top edge to fill in the front um, there's still a gap over most of it i've also made this box this is the bit that's going to go at the back which has buttons on it you can see i've also kind of filled in the edges of that that's going to go somewhere like this that will be attached on the side there. Okay, you can see I've finished all the front sections now. I've added um, another row of bamboo skewers and now I've just filled in all the gaps, this time using the PVA glue. Then I've gone over and I've sanded everything a little bit. Much of this will get smoothed in when I come to paint it as well. On the keys, what I've done is I've added a couple of nails to each one. They are hammered in at an angle just to make it really firm so the keys aren't going anywhere. On the back box I've added these buttons. These are made with just handles from a chest of drawers and I've sawn them down so they're a lot thinner and then just screwed them onto the box. The box is actually stuck in place now as well. 
and then in the middle here you can see I've just used crumpled aluminium foil squashed it all together and I've made this kind of ring this is going to be like the cushion that he kind of sits on or is around him as a support um, and then I've gone over that with kitchen paper you can see uh, what's going on on the inside here as well it's pretty hollow and it's quite lightweight really considering how big it is At this point I decided to start making some of the embellishments that go around the side. So there are a lot of these kind of oval bits that go all the way around the outside edge. And I decided to make them just using these uh, long lollipop sticks. And all I'm doing is cutting them up and then just joining two of them together like this. This will give me my main oval shapes and then I'll add more to this as well afterwards. Um, and then at this point I decided that I was going to actually paint it before I added all of these along this sort of outside edge. So this is how I began the painting stages on this whole musical instrument. I just painted the whole of it this really dark brown colour and then I've painted these kind of piano keys in this like nice kind of ivory colour. This is made with yellow ochre and white mixed together. And this is just a base colour for everything and then I'll go over and add um, lots more kind of dry brushing and you know edging and that kind of thing to it afterwards right for max rebo i just started off with this which is a whole load of crumpled up carrier bags all squashed together into a ball and then i've gone over that with a bit of aluminium foil and then i've just gone around it with loads of sellotape just to get this overall kind of shape i've also done his head same thing lots of squashed um, carrier bags you can see them all in there and then loads of sellotape and there's a cardboard tube for the start of his nose. The important thing if you're ever going to use this technique is just to make sure that all of the carrier bags are really firmly squashed together. Same with the aluminium foil and then you've got to make sure that when you're wrapping the sellotape around everything it's really tightly wound so that everything is really quite solid and firm. That way it won't be too squishy later on. Okay, to get to this stage, I just drilled a hole through his head and I added some wire through the hole and that allowed me to attach these ears on. The ears have got kind of wire frames to them, um, but you can see the main thing here was just drilling that hole. So I used this drill, just to give you an idea. Uh, that's quite a big hole that went through it. And then the I went from both sides, as you can see there, and then this is the wire. When you connect the wire, it's worth like twisting it round itself like this, so you've got it nice and firm, and then it will push through the hole easily. Then you can add wires that go all around the head and all around the ears. The ears can be made separately using aluminium foil, and then just wound around with the wires. Um, I did the same thing then with the arms. Drill through, add a wire through, and that connects the arms on. And they're fairly firm at the moment, but they'll need a lot more firming up as we go. Okay, you can see he's got an extra coating on now. This is a mix of the flooring PVA glue and kitchen paper. So you paint the glue on, then you put like sections of the kitchen paper on over the glue, and then you paint glue over the top of that again. And you just keep creating several layers, so it's just like doing paper mache, and it makes it really, really strong, really tough. I then added his fingers in the same way, just with crumpled up aluminium foil, covered with kitchen paper and PVA glue. Then all of the details like his eyes and all the wrinkles, little kind of spots and things on him, they're all created using milliput. Milliput is a two part putty. You mix the two parts together in equal amounts and it starts to set rock hard in about four hours. You can see I used it to create the whole of the end of his nose. Um, but yeah, lots of spots, lots of wrinkles and that kind of thing. It's just really good for these kind of finishing off details. You end up getting a much more refined look overall. The kitchen paper and PVA glue mix is a, a good idea because it gives you lots of kind of natural wrinkles anyway. So this whole creature is going to end up looking nice and wrinkly. But it's just for those extra kind of big wrinkles that you really want to show up. Um, use the milliput at the end. The other thing that I ended up using the milliput for were the tips of his fingers um, because each of the fingers has got a kind of a hole at the end. So you can basically just add these kind of um, round shapes on the end of each finger, smooth them all in 
and then you just make a little hole using a ball stylus or something like that in the end of each finger. For the first painting stage I just painted him a flat blue. I'm using System 3 acrylic paints to do all the paintwork on this um, but you can see he already starts to look a lot more like Max Rebo just by having the flat blue colour added. This is going to be the darkest kind of blue that's on him and then I'm just going to build up much lighter blues with dry brushing over the top. Okay, this is what he looked like after all the dry brushing. So all the really lighter blues are just on all of the highest points. So if you haven't done dry brushing before, the technique is just that you get some blue on your brush and then you almost dry your brush completely. And then you're just basically just dusting it over all the top surfaces, all the kind of highest up points. So if you look carefully, you can see all the kind of peaks and ridges and things like that, all the little spots. Anything that's raised up has got the light blue on it. All of the kind of um, deep parts remain in the dark blue that I painted it originally. So it gives this really nice kind of textured effect. It brings out all of the wrinkles and makes him look much more kind of realistic. Gives him a good realistic skin texture. Okay, and this is what he ends up looking like with his eyes painted black. Much more realistic like the one in the movie. You can see as well I've added a bit more dry brushing with an even lighter blue just to bring out some of his textures even more. So he's got much more realistic skin texture now and yeah I'm really pleased with how he looks at this stage and he's basically ready to go into his musical instrument. Okay and this is how he turned out. I'm really pleased with him overall. I think this is one of the best creatures that I've made so far. I'm just really pleased with the overall outcome. So if you have a look, I've painted the buttons at the back there with a gold edge, just using gold metallic paint. I've also made like a little motor to go at the back here. Uh, that's just made with some tubs and some bits of plywood. There's a little box as well in front of that. Um, they were just painted brown and then I dry brushed silver just to bring out some of the edges and things. And it really makes them look like they're made out of metal. All of the edging that you're seeing is just strips of rubber that I've nailed in place and then I've just painted them all silver. Underneath each piano key you can see I've added a wire and I've painted those silver as well. Along the front here, all these kind of brass flaps, those were the bits that I was making earlier out of the um, lollipop sticks. I've also added wires at the bottom of those and straws and painted it all gold. Um, I'm really pleased with how Max Rebo actually turned out. All of the wrinkles and things, all the skin texture, um, just really looks like the one in the movie. So extra chuff with that. On the back here, I've added this kind of uh, funnel thing. Um, I made it originally so it was kind of hollowed inside. I made it out of plant pots, um, but also I found this disc, which is like made out of uh, aluminium. And I can add this in, it gives like a metallic kind of sheen to it. Um, the one in the movie has got a sort of a mirror in that space and it reflects Max Rebo. So what I might do in the future is buy a dome mirror and put that in because it would be quite nice to see Max Rebo reflected back in it. But that's like an optional extra for the future. If you haven't seen my recent videos, I've done the Yasm, which is the hairy creature that sings in the band as well. And I've done Psy Snootles, so check that video out. Um, I'll put a link at the end of this video. I'm also going to be making Droopy McCall, he'll be coming soon. So hit subscribe if you want to see anything that I post up in the future. I'd like to thank Milliput for very kindly sponsoring this channel and sending me free Milliput from time to time. Please check out Milliput and give it a try if you haven't used it before. It really is the best sculpting material I can think of. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been useful to some of you. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.